Good morning, Claire here in the Pacific Northwest Puget Sound area, Grow Zone 8B. Happy first week of November. Um, earlier this week, we were in October still, celebrating Halloween and carving pumpkins and doing all the fun family things while we had family here from visiting from Tennessee. And, you know, we very quickly went into other fall time um, adventures, which I can't wait to share with you. This is something that as a Southern girl, transplanted here I had never experienced didn't know this was a thing that I could see with my own naked eye out in the wild but uh, it's still salmon season uh, where the uh, salmon come up the stream to spawn and to make the next generation of salmon so we got to go to a salmon hatchery this week and learn all about their life cycle and um, the adventures they go on from the start of this stream to the ocean and then back again to continue their lineage and i can't wait to share that with you as well as some other really enchanting adventures we got to go on so i hope that you enjoy um, doing that with us i'd also like to share with you guys something that i made for dinner this week that is kind of a weekly uh in my repertoire if you will of, of things that my family likes to eat um, but it's, it's cheap, it's easy, and it's healthy. So I hope that you guys will stick with us as you uh, join us on our adventures this week. So per so usual, happy. I waited till literally the last minute to do anything. So we carp our pumpkins on Halloween morning. We had a plan to make pumpkin heads, take pictures with later. Um, my dad was still here, so <laughs> he was getting in on the action of cutting the holes in the pumpkins for us. Um, and I took over pr <laughs> practically all of the gut scooping activities, except for Katana helped a little. And then we got to work on carving our pumpkin faces. We thought we would share in the pumpkin festivities with the chickens to see if they liked the um, guts and the seeds and they loved it. We ended up giving them more than that because they just devoured it within minutes. And then we took our creations to a spooky house in our neighborhood and used it as a photo prop. And this is how they turned out. Katana did not want to wear the pumpkin head. That's okay, maybe next year, but I think these pictures turned out super duper cute. The chickens had really loved the pumpkin guts when I gave it to them. So I'm gonna give them one of our jack-o'-lanterns to see if they enjoy that as well. So far, I think they're pretty intrigued. This is my favorite crustless quiche recipe and it's super simple. I usually always use spinach as sort of the, the base veggie and I just use like a, I think a 12 ounce package. My hack to get it to be not super moist, super soupy, as spinach can get, has a lot of water content, is I just put it in a micro -safe, microwave safe container, put three tablespoons of water. I wet a paper towel and put it on top of it and then stick it in the microwave for seven minutes. And that usually um, thaws it and kind of pre-cooks it down and it's not super watery. Then I take my eggs, which I, I use six. There might be some double yolks in here, um, maybe not, but I just um, proof them and then add them to this bowl. And then you're just gonna whisk or scramble, whatever you wanna do, to the yolks. Then I chop up half an onion. Then you just saute the onion, uh, diced onion until it's translucent. And then you add in the spinach that you had microwaved into the pot with the onions and continue to saute it um, to get a lot of the uh, moisture content out of the spinach. And then I grated three cups of cheese, which it doesn't show it, but I did a combination of Parmesan, mozzarella, and cheddar because that's what I had in my fridge and I had just smaller chunks of the other ones, wanted to use it, but I also thought it would give it a little bit of razzle-dazzle, and I think that it did. And then once you have your cheese uh, thrown in with your eggs, and then you add in your 
onions and spinach. You're going to just combine it all together. And you'll mix it up and then add in your salt and your pepper and whatever other seasonings that you want in your uh, mixture and stir that up as well. And for me, what I like to do is add about three tablespoons of bacon, uh, real bacon bits to it. You could use, you know, um, freshly made bacon or whatever you'd like to do, but this is what I had available. Then you're just gonna stir everything uh, up one final time and you'll combine it to put into your uh, pie dish. And then once it's all smoothed out, I have one final addition that I like to make to my crustless quiche is I like to take tomato, which whatever I might have, sometimes I use cherry tomatoes um, and sometimes I just use like a beefsteak tomato, whatever I have in my fridge at the time, I just try to not waste anything. So um, this case, I just had a big um, beefsteak, I, I believe beefsteak tomato. And I cut it up into, um, you know, I, I half the tomato and then I just um, cut it into kind of like little thin strips and then I arrange it hopefully prettily and then it's ready to cook for, um, I cook it at 400 for about, about 25 to 30 minutes. I usually start with the lower end, but you want it to be, you know, all the, all the egg cooked through, and then you'll take it out of the oven and let it sit, um, and kind of set for a few minutes before you serve it while it's still warm, but not super cold, or you can put it in the fridge and serve it cold for breakfast however you prefer it but I like it to be a little bit warm and the kids do enjoy this Katana always says pizza because it's in a triangle shape when when I serve it to them here we are at the salmon hatchery they have this really cool statue out front but the most impressive thing to me was seeing the salmon which there's some as you can see in the right hand corner that are actually still alive and swimming and making their way along and then there's a few that didn't quite make it and the ducks got to have a nice little dinner thanks to the salmon and then this was so cool to me seeing them trying to jump up this stream now this hatchery they have this set up to where the that's what they naturally want to do but see those gates to the right side the salmon go over to those gates from there it diverts them over there and they try to jump in when there's when it, they have room for them and then they go up in these like little lock channels to um to go into these tanks where they're able to spawn and they're able to harvest the eggs so that they can hatch in a safe place safe from the ducks safe from the raccoons safe from all the creatures that would want to eat the salmon eggs before they can then we were able to go on another cool adventure that I was so excited to experience. Um, there's these uh, forest trolls that are these sculptures made with, with wood and natural items from an artist named Thomas Danbo. He's uh, a Danish artist and he's done installations like this around the world from my understanding. But he's put six of them in the Washington and Oregon area. So that really ignited us with the passion to find all of them. So this weekend as a family, we went to find another one in an area called Bainbridge Island. And it was really cool to get to see. It's, it's hard to understand like the scale of how large these are. And it's a little bit frightening for like little people like Katana. She did not want really to go up close to it. But in the process, we were able to go on uh, adventure out in the forest and experience, you know, puddles. That is always a thing out here in the Pacific Northwest. There's always going to be some water, standing water to jump in. So we took full advantage of that. But it was really cool to walk into this space and just see it really open up and, and to see it up close and personal. And we're excited to go on more of these adventures and find the other four now that we've seen too. 
So Saturday evening here, and I don't know about any of you guys, but this is kind of my laundry catch up day. Uh, Cause I literally hate it. But also I made more work for myself this week than I would have liked. So I tried out the um, Conker's laundry detergent. And I've got to tell you, it is not for you if you have exceptionally dirty people in your house, which I do. I have a little boy, I have a very active little girl, and then I am quite active myself. So it did not get any of the like dirt smell or dirtiness, um, anything out of the clothing. Um, so I had to rewash it. And so I was like, well, maybe I did it user error. Maybe I did not, um, I need to put it in the, in directly in the drum versus in the little container for the thing. So I put it in both places. I put it directly in the drum and in the um, soap dispenser area of the laundry machine. Um, and it still, once again, did not get any of the, you know, stinky armpit smell out of it. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna do regular detergent. So right now I am taking your green detergent suggestions as of now because I'm, I am using something that's, you know, I'm not sure if it's non-toxic, but it's less toxic. Um, but I would love to get less toxicer if that's a thing. Here is our final adventure for the week. This was Sunday morning and just really enjoying the ducks. They followed us wherever we went and they really would come up and, you know, come and try to hang out with us. I know that they want food. Obviously we didn't feed them, but they're so cute. It's hard not to even be tempted by it. And then there are still so many random mushrooms just growing everywhere out here. And the leaves just are just so magnificent. It's just, I know this season is going to be so short, but I just want to enjoy every moment. And here we are back again at it with the puddles. They are just too hard to resist for both the kids. And the video would not be complete without an update of the garden. I wanted to show you guys the Kel and Kohlrabi area. It's doing really well. I really probably need to start harvesting some of these kale leaves and eating them and maybe cooking with them. Also, I will show you guys later, but here is the radish patch and it is doing really well still. I harvested one. I don't think it's quite finished but this one plant right here is massive so it's probably like almost ready ready as well as our possible little carrot growth right here so hey get out of there um if they don't get trampled to death or we'll just see what they are um but they've been covered up because of the frost last week until we, we didn't have as much uh, inclement weather this week. So I was able to um, leave them uncovered to get plenty of sunshine. And here's some more radishes. This is the wasabi I'm pretty sure that I, I planted. But they're, they're, they seem kind of puny. So I don't know if they're gonna, if they're gonna make a nice big bulb in there. And here's a flashback to this week when I actually did pull up that radish I told y'all I'd show you guys. Um, but it it turned out okay. I actually, truthfully, I'm not a huge radish eater. I don't know what they should look like. I don't really know what they should taste like. I don't think that this was finished finished. So that's why I'm not touching the other ones. So the Brussels sprouts, they're still alive. They're still here. I'll cover them back up when it's going to be frosty as well as our garlic that already sprouted. I still need to um, plant some more garlic to before it freezes, um, probably by next week because we're gonna have another freeze, or frost, not a freeze. And then here is our uh, broccoli and it's still alive and doing well and not being eaten up. And then take you over here to our carrots, which I'm just gonna leave here, even though they did get disturbed, but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be okay. Oh, and then here is, this was our pea plant. The beans, they couldn't 
king with the with the frost but the peas they're still here even though they are disrupted from where i put them but they're still alive so who knows we might get some more peas off of these guys we'll just say thank you guys so much for joining us this week on our adventures i hope you guys found the trolls just as enchanting as we did and i can't wait to share more of them with you guys as we are able to plan little family excursions to discover them for ourselves and just a hot tip um if your area is anything like mine these specialty pump pumpkins because halloween's over they got reduced drastically i was able to get this and two other really cool looking pumpkins for two dollars so my plan for this upcoming week is to try to cook them and maybe can some and as well as save the seeds so just thought i'd share that with you guys so i hope you guys join us next week as i f around with these and we'll find out what happens y'all have a great uh sunday